Hi, good afternoon, everybody. This call is now being recorded. So, hope everyone is doing fine. All right. So, first of all, I welcome every one of you, um, for those of you who have just joined, to attend this uh, Andrew College panel discussion um, on the theme called Unemployment in Nagaland Causes and um, Possible Solutions, organized by um, Department of Economics, Digital College, and Eastern Christian College. So first of all, let me introduce myself. So my name is Yim Younger Ozukam, Department of Economics from Digital College. And um, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to be the uh, moderator for this event. So first of all, I would like to um, introduce uh, the uh, presenters and the panelists for today's um, event as, as well as the judges for today's event. So first of all, we have Kitolo Lorin from fifth semester, uh, Vinny V third semester, and Shakoi Kolniak fifth semester representing Tetsu College. And secondly, we have um, Kilipo fifth semester, Kipipo, fifth semester, and Ichi, fifth semester, uh, representing from um, representing Eastern Christian College. And um, similarly, we have, um, next, I want to introduce the uh, judges for today. So first of all, we have Ma'am Aosenla, assistant professor at Kwai University, Nagaland. And secondly, we have Sir Sinihonlo, uh, assistant professor from St. Joseph University, and lastly, we have Dr. Ren Pini, uh, assistant professor from Christ University, Bangalore. So I, on behalf of everyone, would like to um, thank you for your time to attend this, uh, taking time out to at attend this event. So, and lastly, I want to uh, introduce uh, my dear uh, colleagues. Dr. Deborah Prada and uh, HOD and uh, Ms. Lily, uh, assistant professor from Tetsu College. And of course, we have um, Ma'am Timsitula from Eastern Co Christian College as well. So as we all know, the uh, topic for our discussion uh, today is regarding unemployment um, problems in Nagaland. So um, this problem of Nagaland, uh, sorry, this, this problem of unemployment, it has been persisting for a very long time, at least for some decades. And we have been dealing uh, with this problem for, uh, it, this problem has been plaguing us for some time. So I personally feel that, uh, you know, this problem, uh, we as people from uh, economics, economics background, and, uh, you know, students and scholars of economics, uh, I think I feel like it is our duty to, uh, you know, discuss these issues and, you know, look for new ways and to bring about, uh, you know, pro possible solutions, you know, to uh, to deal with these problems. So today, uh, you know, we're going to do that um, today, through, and I, I, I hope that through this discussion, through this e event, um, you know, we'll get uh, a productive result. And uh, I hope that we will get, we will all get to learn something uh, new um all right so i just want to give you a little bit of an information in the order of the um today's event okay so uh first of all we will have welcome address by uh dr deborah Prada, um uh, in department in charge of Tetsu college and uh it will be followed by uh, discussions from the uh, speakers um and which will be followed by a q a sessions um, after they're done, uh, um, after they're done with their uh, you know, talks, and after the Q and A sessions, we will have the result declaration, and lastly, we will have a uh, vote of thanks uh, from Demsitula HOD, uh, Department of Economics, ECC, Eastern Christian College. Okay, very well. So. Um, to start off, let me uh, I, I give the time to Dr. Debarbada for his uh, welcome address. So uh, please take the time. 
thank you so much, Yam Yangar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to today's sessions of uh, inter-college panel discussion on, on the theme, unemployment uh, in Nagaland, uh, causes and possible solutions. Uh, this uh, particular program is being jointly organized uh, uh, by the Department of Economics, Stetso College, and uh, Department of Economics, Eastern Christian College, Timapo. Today we have with us today uh, six young minds, and they will be talking about the topic that matters most to them. Within a year or two, these students, these youths of today, they will enter the job market. And we all know that it's been almost uh, six decades that uh, Nagaland got statehood. But then the problem of unemployment uh, is not reducing. Uh, so we thought that uh, this particular topic uh, will help the student to understand the situation and maybe they will be in a position to uh, adjust with themselves and then they will go for curriculum uh, or they will uh, develop the skills and when they enter the job market, uh, they get employment. Uh, I am very happy that uh, we have six participants and I am delighted to have three uh, uh, scholars, academicians from uh, Nagaland and outside the Nagaland to judge this uh, event. I welcome you all to um, to this event and uh, I expect that all of you will uh, will uh, take active participation in this program and uh, uh, you will give your valuable feedback as well. So with this uh, I want to uh, welcome all the participants and, uh, uh, and start the procedure. So all the best. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Sir Tepa, uh, for your lovely speech. Now, um, let's move over to the next uh, order of the program. So we will now begin with the uh, uh, discussion. So we have here, we have, I've given, uh, I'm given a sequence of the uh, participants. So before we start, I would like to uh, give you a few informations. Uh, so each participants are, are given uh, five minutes each for their uh, time. And uh, okay, so uh, just want to remind everyone to uh, kindly switch off your uh, microphone for those of you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so first of all, we have key people from uh, Eastern Christian College. So now I give time to key people, Eastern Christian College. Uh, you may kindly take your time. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Kibibo. Yes, Kibibo, you're audible. Okay. You only fail when you stop trying. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected the moderator, panel of judges, and everyone who have joined in for the program. My good name is Kibibo Zikapo. I'm from Eastern Christian College, presently in BA fifth semester. Without wasting much time, I will straightly like to jump to the topic. Unemployment, a word which is very common to everyone in Nagaland. It is like a headache or a very high temperature, which is very unpleasant and exhausting. What are the reasons for unemployment? Well, when this question is asked, the first answer that comes to most of our mind is very simple. After all, we have our government to blame. And yes, the answer is partly true. The lack of Political instability and proper infrastructure gives birth to unemployment. Though the government, with slow space of time, they are taking up certain schemes such as DDU GKY, which aims to target the youth group of 15 to 35 years of age, providing incentives as a part of government, uh, government aids. So, 
But practically speaking, the government has not so much to do for in fixing this issue. The problem of unemployment is not the government headache alone. It is a problem of everyone. And we have we should be working together to solve this instead of waiting for the government to help it, help us. It is no problem as much as it is mine. And as for the other problem is the attitude of the people. The one bad habit of the Naga society is that we tend to give up very easily without even trying. And if it is not government job, we stop or we either wait for it. And when we realize it, we become a parent, which is too late. And we call them unemployed. Or in my term, I call those people who are happy on a Monday. So to provide employment to the people, uh, the education system can help a lot in it. But according to me, the educational system of Nagaland is a non-job based oriented system. It is just a theoretical based system. There is a need for shaping, revamping and reconstructing our educational system. Not everything about our educational system is wrong, but it does not mean it does not need any fixing. The very uniqueness of the students or children are shut close by the teacher, by either teacher in, or institutional regulations or some silly stupid reasons. The students are given so much outdated information to remember, to memorize and to learn that they don't have time to create. And yes, it is also the student's duty to enhance our maturity level and to understand the broad picture, not confined by the books, but understanding what is happening around us and what are the challenges in the society. The education system shouldn't be a place like prison where students are bound to follow the rules. They should be given the freedom to explore the talents and their skills. And also, speaking of attitude of the people, uh, the best example that I can give as of now is uh, during this lockdown, we have seen many young YouTubers of Nagaland coming up. They're they are using the talents, their skills to provide entertainment to the people and as well as they are earning through it. There are many ways of us for us to be self-employed, such as we can take up many professions such as a photographer, a tutor, an, art, an artist, designer, and many more. There's more to life than we know about. We just have to get out from our comfort zone and explore it. We Naga people need to be more civilized and polite. Our ways of choosing our job and a career are very narrow. Youngster can only think about a white collar job because we as a society, we venerate only those employed in a noble position. It always sounds better when people say that one is preparing for IAS or MBBS competitive exam than then they say that one is doing a clerical job. Many of us think that the problem of un unemployment should be residual problem, but it is not. It should be a primary problem which we should come together to solve it and which we cannot only depend on the government or we should not only depend on the, our elders. It should be us coming together to work against it. The problem of unemployment cannot be completely re removed, but it can be reduced to its maximum if we come together and help it. And as I would like to conclude with a quotation which says that, don't be a part of the problem, but be a part of the solution. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, key people, for your time and uh, for your uh, views and ideas. Now, let's just uh, move over to the second one, uh, second panelist, that is, we have Shakui Konyak from Tetsu College. So kindly, you may kindly take your time. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Shakui, you're at Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respect that moderator, judges, and teaching staff, and to all my dear friends. My name is Shakwe from Tetsa College, fifth semester. And as per the panel's topic, I'll be talking about unemployment in Naklin. Unemployment simply refers to a situation where an individual is employable and is seeking for a job but are unable to find. And when we talk about unemployment in Naglane, a passing on the second report released on June 2020 by Ministry 
Union Ministry of Labor and Employment in Lok Sabha, Nagaland is found to be the state with highest unemployment in Northeast region with 17.4 percent, followed by Tripura with 10 percent. And with the unpeated rise of educated as well as uneducated uh, unemployment in Nagaland, a huge concern has been laid for uh, planners as well as public allies for employment opportunity. Moreover, uh, thousands of unemployed in the states have been forced to confirm with the harsh reality of unemployment against which they do not have any defenses. Thus, the problem of unemployment has become a serious issue in Nagaland, which needs to be tackled with timely attention and solution. There are various causes of unemployment in Nagli, and I'll be discussing a few of it. The first point that I'll be discussing is causes uh, lack of uh, education and curriculum. There are various uneducated as well as educated unemployed in Nagali. This is because the Nagali education policy follows and focuses mainly on learning to know and ignores the race, uh, that is, learning to do and learning to live, which are the basic quality of life. And most of the primary, secondary, or even some colleges mainly focuses on Bugis knowledge and fail to make proper curricular activities for the development of student skills, which results to unskilled labor and un uh, unemployment in Nagli. For example, uh, let me just take an example. How to ride a cycle. A student may score 100 out of 100 in examinations after studying how to ride a bicycle. But unless that very person is given a bicycle to drive or to learn, he or she will never learn how to drive it. Here, what I mean to say is, unless we do what we know, we will never learn a thing for real. So, even if, uh, due to such lack of curriculum and activities, the ability of the students and the skills remains unrefined and even after HSLC graduations or higher studies, their skills remain unrefined and which results them not capable of taking any jobs. And some of them end up unable to decide their own professions. So such kinds of uh, curricular activities should be organized so that they can go forward for employment opportunities and various uh, scenes that comes up for employment. The second thing that I want to discuss, uh, the causes that I want to discuss is attitude of people towards job. Most of the Naga people's attitude towards jobs like private as well as uh, self-reliant jobs are ignorant. They mostly prefer governmental jobs and they only apply for such things. Most of the time, if they fail to get such governmental jobs, they just wait for the next opportunity and do nothing at home and just waste your time. And that's my own personal observations in my locality as well as in others. And the third point that I would like to discuss is corruption. Um, when we talk about corruption, we all know that Naglin is one of the most corrupted state in India. And when we talk about unemployment and corruption, it is an interlinked process, but it always leads to unemployment. Corrupted leaders would never appoint a person with uh, good quality and, and what to say, mm, yeah, good quality and personality who could develop the economic development of Naglin. They only sell the post for those to those people with better appointment or with those who uh, with to those who have support from higher ups. So uh, appointing those people who are incapable and thus takes the economy to a recession phase and thus when economy is laced in a recession phase the opportunity that must be created for unemployed people is, becomes impossible. Thus, um, there are various solutions for, to remove unemployment in Nagaland. Um, the first thing that we can start off with is 
to give importance to all the quality of life that is learning to know learning to do and learning to live because if even one of those things are missing it will be an incomplete quality of life and the second thing that we can talk about is the suggestion that i can suggest is to change the attitude of people towards jobs such as uh, by organizing advertisement training as well as sims so that it would encourage them to employ in other jobs apart from governmental jobs if they, uh, if they fail to get a governmental job um, next is making government and leaders to follow various employment schemes organized by the indian government such as mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme prime minister swaraj kar yojana etc so there are many other solutions to it but these are some of the few solutions that i'd like to suggest and consequently by encouraging such activities and schemes the unemployment can at least be reduced to a certain extent and develop our state to a next level with this i'd like to wind up thank you okay so uh, thank you mr shakoy uh, for your ideas and thoughts that was quite insightful so uh, next we have uh, the third panelist we have kilipo uh, from eastern christian college so you may kindly take your time hello i hope i'm audible yes yes okay. good afternoon respected moderator panel of judges all the lecturers present here and my dear brothers and sisters today we are here to discuss on a very delicate topic that is unemployment in nagaland what is unemployment it is a situation where there is no job or there is joblessness or there is phenomenon or there is joblessness in an economy unemployment remains the most fundamental concern for an individual as well as for the society unemployment is a world crisis and it has been at its peak since that time in memorial talking about unemployment it may vary from country to country or state to state with nagaland having 21.4% unemployment rate as of july 2021 the national institute of transforming india niti ayog and the nrdc and sdg index have declared nagaland as one of the worst performing states in india which was publicized to media and as such was published in the frontier manipur the sentinel assam notice now and a lot of criticism was discussed in a live performance therefore being a young and upcoming generation we should understand and discuss what are the causes and also get to learn the suggestive measures to get away with this unemployment i would love us to drift our attention on what are the causes of unemployment by focusing our topic on poor governance government is people and people is government so with such a definition there can never be any um direct criticism on any government however india being a democratic government and as such as in india in india being a developing country election plays a huge role for the overall development of any state nagaland being an opposition less government would not could not share its view or lay direct response for why the performance in the state is being at its worst since its statehood in 1963 the following political parties such as the congress the Pe rising people's party rpp the national people's party npp have been criticizing upon the present government that is the pta government bringing the government credibility on the scanners while some attributes state's poor performance to corruption other accuses the present government of being a business minded government who only works for their benefits and not for the welfare of the people now i would want us to focus on the reasons for why uh, the lack of diversity in curriculum Uh, in educational curriculum is being a cause for unemployment diversity in educational curriculum is one of the most controversial topic for me um 
since getting to learn about the history of India, I have not got to learn anything about, not even a single paragraph about our culture that is Nagaland. And being a minority indigenous people among the most populated nations in the world, such as India with 1.4 billion population, we should know who and how we have come with so far. According to my concept, there is biasness in writing about the culture and origin of such a history of India. However, if the MBSC or Naglan University takes the initiative and produce our own historical facts and bring upon it in the school curriculum, it may prove fruitful in the near future. It is barely my opinion, but when the world and when the other nations were fighting amongst each other, for who will dominate the field of science and technology, our forefathers were roaming out there naked in the Naga Hills. Nagas are counted civilized, but it has just been, we have been, just been counted as civilized just a decade ago. Lack of diversity in curriculum can also be focused on the Indian curricular system, since every state has to follow the same curriculum given out by the central board. I should say that Indian curriculum gives out as you said, the Indian curriculum is purely quantity and not quality focused. It is just focused on producing a lot of quality education, quantity education. And we know Indian non-detention policy was introduced in the 86th Amendment Right to Education Act, where all children between the age of 6 to 14 have the right to full-time education of acceptable and equitable quality. It means that children will inevitably be promoted to the next class. This type of education system have made the children pampered and shielded the society in a big way. In trying to help this, we have brought the best down so low. Now I would want us to focus on some suggestive measures on how to overcome this unemployment that we are facing through. The first thing that we can focus on is about on how to eradicate the political corruption. Since India, we are one of the largest democratic country in the world. Our minds tend to be infested with freedom, which eventually lets us to have a corrupt mind. All the schemes, central sponsored funds, appointments, etc., are all brought from the center. And as a public, during election time, our people, we the Nagas, we tend to sell our votes which directly or indirectly stops us from raising our voice in the wrongdoing of our government, even if it is uh, as an open secret that the government is doing wrong. Eradication of this corruption will eventually make Nagaland a better Nagaland. We should do away with selling our votes and focus on maintaining free and fair elections. Promoting cultural her heritage of the Nagas, though we Nagas in the 21st century are living so much like uh, civilized individual. It is not only, it is just only true character and not true in discipline and in ideology. Trying so hard to cope up with um, the civilized world, we are forgetting our cultural heritage. So we must learn how to promote our cultural heritage first. On the bright side, recently our society has seen a great awakening in the commercial enterprise. People are making ideas come true, and they are risking everything to develop the ideas. A ray of hope seems to uh, have broken through the plague of unemployment mentally, and maybe we are looking for the new uh, race of generation, a generation of creators. We must, but however, we must always remember that we have a creator who is greater than us and our creation. Getting to have such a productive panel discussion on such a delicate topic, the organizers from both the colleges can keep the discussion in record, collect the task and make a hard copy out of it so and publish it in the medias to make the people aware of the situation of what we are going through. A heartfelt gratitude to Tetsu College and Eastern Christian College for coming up with such an intriguing topic. I hope we all got to learn something through this discussion. God bless. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kilipo. Uh, those were some very new uh, uh, issues and uh, thank you for bringing those new issues into the light. Um, so next we have um, Kitolo Lorin from uh, Techo. Take your time. Hello, uh, I hope I'm audible. 
Yes, yes, Hitolo. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hitolo, and I'm from Tetsuo College. Mm, since our, our moderator and uh, since all of you are aware of what unemployment is, uh, I wouldn't be going with uh, any uh, introductory note, and I would like to jump straight into the issue of uh, unemployment and what it is doing to us, uh, to our Naglen. Uh, without a flourishing private sector, it is quite certain that there is going to be a huge unemployment issue in the area, uh, which is evident in Nagaland. When you look into the issue of unemployment, uh, the root cause is the illegal taxation levied by the underground groups as well as uh, overground organizations. Uh, this is one of the main reasons why investors don't come to Nagaland to put their money on us. There's a huge potential in the agricultural and tourism sector in Nagaland. Even with such taxes being imposed, Nagaland has somewhat managed to make uh, some profit from these two sectors. Now, imagine the revenue the state will generate if there are big mainland companies. Imagine the construction of food processing industries in the agricultural sector and companies like Club Mahindra and uh, Tata Group of Resorts investing in the local tourist facilities. Now, all of that will only be possible if the underground stops charging heavy taxes on businesses, don't you think? It is said that a single group levies a tax of about uh, 80,000 rupees for a single truck crossing the Kohima Dimapur Highway. Now, multiply that by 100 which is uh, the rough estimate of daily truck traffic on the national highway. You have a tax collection of about uh, 80 lakhs per day. These are absolutely absurd numbers, don't you think? And in such conditions, uh, I think businesses have very little margin of profit. Even in the age of GST, uh, police personals, motor vehicle associations, uh, municipal and town councils continue to collect taxes. There have been reports that uh, due to it, so much uh, taxation in Nagaland, many Manipur-bound businesses which uh, were earlier based in Dimapur have now shifted base to Silchar and Assam. And now they're operating through uh, the Jiribam National Highway. We should remember that uh, when a business relocates, it takes away jobs along with them, be it a small hardware store or a big multinational organization. Each of them is an uh, employment opportunity for the youth. Let's not forget that the taxes levied are not uh, only by one group, but by multiple organizations. Uh, that amounts to hundreds of crores in losses per month uh, for the businesses in the state. Now, the existence of a stable, uh, the non-existence, I'm sorry, the non-existence of a stable, vibrant, and flourishing private uh, sector is what is the biggest issue regarding the employment problem. And perhaps the biggest stumbling block or the hindrance to that is uh, illegal taxation. Until illegal taxation is removed, there will be little or no investment from the outside, and hence, uh, job creation will be always below par. The second issue I would like to address is the wrong attitude of the people. According to the NPC chairman, T.S. Angami, 11,160 applicants appeared for NPC examination 2018 for just uh, 62 posts. Now, the applicant to post ratio is 180 is to 1. Any average uh, in your right mind would uh, find competing against so many students very intimidating. And now the question arises, why should then they appear in NPC exam? Are there no other career options to choose from? Well, uh, I think uh, the answer here is uh, inferiority complex between jobs in the public sector and the private sector. Children at a very young age are taught that they should aim for white-collared government jobs and private jobs, on the other hand, uh, they're shunned by the society. As a kid, when asked about my aim in life, my answer would be an IS officer. Growing up, I realized that uh, I shouldn't even be appearing in PC exam. Well, again, there's this question, why then are you appearing in PC exam? Well, uh, there is, in a way, a moral obligation to my parents, I believe. And I think uh, same is the case for so many other experience, don't you think? It is undeniable that uh, government jobs are somewhat better than private sector jobs. But like the saying which goes, too much of anything is bad. Our society has become excessively dependent on the government occupation as well as the government. Now, Nagaland has the highest number of government employees in the country. Ultimately, it also has the highest number of unproductive employees sucking out the state's treasury. Now, according to state government, 60% of uh, planned fund is consumed by the government employees. This in turn retards the rate of development in Nagaland, which I believe is non-existent in Nagaland, if you think about it. As mentioned earlier, we need a stable and flourishing, vibrant private sector to tackle unemployment. With increasing a number of graduates every year and limited number of uh, government departments, uh, I mean government posts, the already falling government is uh, further burdened. In addition, most of the people in Nagaland lacks uh, dignity of labor, so uh, norm uh, so low-profile jobs are being filled, uh, filled up by immigrants from other places. Now, these immigrants, they work in Nagalan and then they send their money back to their own uh, hometown, breaking the chain of money supply. 
ultimately as a result we remain unemployed and proud the first step we can uh, take to help ourselves uh, is by changing our attitude and humbling ourselves uh, and maybe maybe if the new united government is formed we can see changes or maybe th this is just another uh, tactic of theirs to you know fill their pockets and thus, uh, the attitude of complete dependence on government should change uh, from our side. And now the last, uh, but not the least uh, issue I would like to address uh, is the issue of uh, land ownership. Article 371, of, uh, I'm sorry, Article 371A of the Indian Constitution uh, prohibits citizens other than the indigenous Naga citizens from buying or owning land in Nagaland. Now you, now you will ask, uh, how is land related to unemployment? Well, to answer this, let's uh, go back Let's take ourselves to the story of uh, crude oil production and uh, exploration in Nagaland. Uh, the Oil and Natural Gas uh, Corporation Limited, ONGC, they discovered oil in the year 1981 in the Champang area of Oka district. Uh, but uh, the state government in 1994 stopped all the ONGC activities. It stopped because of uh, complications uh, over who owns the land, uh, its resources, and minerals. Uh, similarly, uh, the two-lane project uh, along the highway, uh, National Highway 202 uh, is at a pause because uh, the locals there, they have uh, decided to, you know, uh, build sheds uh, along the way so that they can uh, avail the damaged property compensation, I think. Yeah. Th these two examples are given in the sense that uh, one is purely focused on economic development and the other uh, purely in state development. However, in both the cases, we can see, I mean, it reflects our greed for money and how naive we, the people of uh, Nagaland, can be. We know industrialization is an important driver of uh, employment and uh, poverty eradication in developing countries. We sit at home and complain about uh, unemployment, yet our own greed for money and ancestral ownership of land won't allow industrialization to happen. I think the present generation and the state should not be deprived of economic activities and the benefits that can occur if industrialization can happen. As already reiterated earlier, with the introduction of uh, big industries, we can usher in a lot of economic ac activities in order to address the issue of unemployment problem. Only with the cooperation of the general public, uh, the government, and big companies, uh, we can allow industrialization to happen. We Nagas have a perceived notion that uh, we have rich oil reserve deposits and we only need to drill. Yet, we don't see any developments uh, raised in this issue. But what we don't realize is that uh, in the 21st century, uh, it is expect uh, the 21st century is expected to see a major shift in energy sources with uh, with gradual decline in the usage of uh, fossil fuels. Now, imagine uh, economic developments coming to Nagaland only after 20 years. Well, we could lose the word, uh, the word and value of uh, the oil. Don't you think? Allowing, I think, allowing them to. Uh, initiate the activities will only serve to the advantage of the government and the public. Hectic economic activities will take place and infrastructural developments uh, in the form of roads, uh, bridges, manpower engagements and service contracts etc. will also come along. Well, while all of us are happy about big state developmental projects like the railway, uh, the four-lane project and the implementation of smart city concepts, no one seems to share concern about Nagaland's economic development. We need sustainable long-term economic activities that can generate regular income. We need to differentiate between state development activities and economic activities. It is time we shift our attention on, on initiatives that will bring about long-term gainful engagement and employment. After all, what do we gain if we are able to drive on good roads all the way to our doorsteps? What will happen when the railways bring in more finished goods that are cheaper compared to locally available equivalent products? What about the influx of outsiders and tourists who will come in contact with our people living deep inside the rural villages? With these three questions left for you guys to answer, I would like to conclude here. Thank you all so much. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Hitolo. That was quite some insightful ideas and uh, thoughts. So uh, next we have uh, Ichi Konyak from uh, Eastern Christian College. So I give the time to the fifth class. Hello, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, uh, Mr. Chiyar. Okay. Respected today's moderator and panel of judges and all the members that have gathered here this afternoon, a very blessed afternoon to you all. I am Ichi H. Kunyak, 
of BA fifth semester from Eastern Christian College. Today, um, we have gathered here to discuss on unemployment in Nakalen. Firstly, I would like to say what unemployment is. Unemployment, it is defined as a state of a person without a job or a source of income. It is a state of joblessness. Especially in Nakalen, when we talk about unemployment, like what comes in our mind is that joblessness. But the people of Nakalen, we don't, we don't like, we don't care about our joys, but we usually go for government job. That's the reason why the people of Nakalen is like have a huge number of unemployment and over 63,733 person youths are unemployed in Nakalen and 41,306 men are unemployed, unemployed and then 22,427 women are unemployed in Nakalen. I would like to share some points presenting the course of unemployed unemployment in Nakalen. One, lack of infrastructure. In Nakalen, we don't have a developed or proper infrastructure, so most of the people are unemployed. And two, lack of dignity and sense of pride. Uh, most of the people in Nakalen like dignity of labor, so low profile jobs are being filled up by migrants from other places. Uh, we hesitated to do lower level jobs and instead remain unemployed and proud. Three, uh, backdoors appointment. This is not a new thing in Nakalen. The not so marginalized uh, applicants are selected and the well qualified ones are left unemployed in most cases. Four, Poverty. This this is an uh, innovative causes resulting in unemployment, um, as poverty hinders one from acquiring good education. Five lack of uh, crea crea uh, creativity. It is a common fact that most of us lack the sense of uh, creativity, employment, employment opportunities for ourselves, and instead we often go for government jobs. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Ichi Konyak, um, for your thoughts and ideas as well. So we only have one uh, participant left, that is Vinnie V from Tetsu College. So uh, you may kindly take the time. Hello, everyone. I'm Adiba. Yes, Vinivi, you're audible. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected moderators, judges, lecturer, and student presenter. I'm Vinivi Tiki from Tesco College. I'll be speaking on the topic of employment in Nagaland, its causes and suggest solutions. To save the time, I'll go direct to the causes. That is one poor governance. Well, as we all know, Nagaland has emerged as the worst performing state overall in the Northeast region, according to Niki Ayo report on August. What I want to say is, uh, Nagaland government is already corrupted. See, examples say like civil exams. Before the exam or before the exam seat are already reserved. The corrupt government with backdoor appointments. Also, there is no big companies or industries here, so it's hard to, to start a business. It's hard to it's hard to start a business or get a several jobs here. A civil job, why civil job is because as there is no such big companies here, or oh, people randomly can give us insurances even to their own employees. Yes, even in this lockdown, many people were unemployed due to their uh, less salary, or yes, economics were all done. Uh, there is no positive impact, or no positive impact or contact from the government, and everything was just underdeveloped. Second, attitude of the people. Most problems was under here. But Nagas unwilling to take a small job uh, due to the sense of pride, uh, and only looking for the job that pay them much more income, uh, discarding the rest. Also, the view that uh, they see government job as a successful one, and not at and not the others. We also remember that uh, earning less is better than or earning less. There are so much in good with government job that we don't think private job will do us anything good. Our mind is regarding this. We really need to be changed. Third, lack of diversity in educational curriculum. With the fault of education system where students actually don't learn anything, uh, they just 
stuff, memorize stuff, which they will eventually for, forget. Of course, quality of teaching depends upon the quality of teachers and institutions. To be uh, fully realized, the potential of this benefit school must ensure diversity exists on every level uh, by ensuring diverse enrollment, implementing curricula which reflect the history and cultures uh, of students of all backgrounds. Also, without establishing relationship between, also without establishing a relationship between education and employment, uh, higher education cannot create a tech raw material, raw talent. In this, in today's competitive world, where institutions are striving for towards professional courses, we Naga are still lagging behind in this regard. Third, for the social economic infrastructure backwardness. This is a little similar lack of facilities being provided by the government. For example, when you ask someone what they will do or go for the for, what they will do after the to do for the further studies, they will obviously and probably say they will go out uh, of the state that there is no much facility uh, here uh, to pursue goals, both in government and in private sectors. If, even if there is any it falls in comparison and with the state with other states, it falls in comparison with other states and institutions. Many colleges here in Nagarin were still following the traditional mode of teaching and learning uh, instead of adopting technological teaching, along with the dependence that they have on the government and the government with corrupt government with backdoor appointment and negligence in the development of socioeconomic infrastructure backwardness. Many youth end up their life unemployed. Uh, the fifth one is parallel government. Uh, there are, I think there is more than 300 NGOs here in Nagaland, and Dinobor alone has 99 NGOs. And I think when this is, and when this is, when this uh, NGOs are examined, only 293 are registered, 293 are registered with the government of India. And out of these 293, only 40 to 50, only 40 to 50 are genuinely functioning. We don't, with Naga, we don't exactly know the concept or no clear picture about the NGO, NGOs, about it to be precise and detailed. We really need to, uh, we really need to differentiate between NGO and civil society so, so that we are not confused with the concept. Of course, some are really working the, uh, for the state, to clean the government, for the executive project, but many are still not bothering about the funds. Uh, and there are more ministerial for when they, they save the money. They just do it for their self satisfaction or just say in, uh, for their enjoyment. I think this insurgency is not a literacy and a same government. I think this insurgency contributes greatly towards unemployment. Multiple extortion and cases really discourage, discourage big companies to set foot in Nagaland. Also the young entrepreneurs to you know also the young entrepreneurs are discouraged to venture in this business world. So to conclude my speaking, uh, I like to suggest that uh, we people must also be a little wise and little wise in choosing our leaders uh, and also for being a victim of bribery and brute force. And government can also contribute, also help provide opportunities to establish them or allow the foreign business to establish their branches in the state. Thank you. All right, so uh, thank you very much, Vinivi, for your uh, sharing your thoughts and ideas. So uh, now that was our last uh, participant, and now we have uh, come to the most interesting as well as important uh, part of our program. Um, so next we have the uh, Q&A session, questions and answer session. So um, I'll gi now give the time to the uh, from the audience uh, if you if you have any um, queries or any questions that you uh, might like to ask. So the participants, uh, if you are ready, then uh, you kindly uh, you may answer their questions. Okay, so uh, now I give the time to the uh, audience for your questions. So you can either, uh, you know, uh, use the message box or you can just simply um, use your uh, mic. So.
So uh, the respected judges can also uh, ask away the questions. Yes, hello, sir. Okay, hello. Hello, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay, my question is to Kitolo. Okay. Yes, so, yes, please ask. Why do you... Oh, all right. Yeah, carry on, carry on. Okay. Uh, according to your opinion, yes. What is the major hur hurdle for our uh, <clears throat> on account of our undevelopment state and unemployment? Major hurdle uh, for our um, economic development. Major. And un unemployment hurdle. too. And unemployment. That uh, I uh, I think it will be uh, illegal taxation. My my first point. Because see, uh, because of illegal taxation, only uh, companies are investing in Nagaland, right? And then, like I said, in order to tackle employment, the government alone they cannot uh, what provide for all the population. So we need uh, private companies. And then, when these groups are levying so much taxes, then they are unable to. I mean, the, these companies they don't want to run losses, obviously. So uh, I think. The main reason is illegal, illegal taxation. Okay, so uh, Potovi, um, I hope you are uh, clear with your thoughts, or would you like to? Ask, do you have any further questions? You, you, you can ask more, bro. All right, all right, all right. And so, uh, okay, <clears throat> that I agree with you regarding unemployment and undevelopment, uh, the underground sections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's not only underground. If you think about it, there's uh, uh, this KMC and DMC. And uh, if you read the news, uh, the DCCI, I think they have. Uh, yes, yes. I yes. mean, they were trying to do that thing, but then uh, I think the government they have uh, resolved the issue, I guess. Or yeah. Okay, so uh, would you like to continue, Potovi, or? Mr. Uh, Mr. Potovi, uh, is there any more questions from your end? Uh, sir, as of now, that would be enough. Okay, all right. Okay, so thank you. All right, so... Uh, okay, so uh, now I... Uh, even the respected judges can uh, take the time to ask away the questions. Uh, in the meantime, um, anyone from the audience can uh, take your time and then uh, ask your questions. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, I've been on there. Yes, yes, you're article, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, Carry on. Uh, a fellow participant, Miss Kilibo, you spoke something on corruption uh, and you gave some solutions on it regarding employment. So can you kindly elaborate more on that sensitive topic? Okay, so... Regarding corruption, I talk on that from the causes, that is the poor governance. So I talked about while some attributes test poor performance to corruption, some accuses the present government of being a business-minded government who only works for their personal gains and not for the welfare of the people. So talking about corruption, it is an open secret that we all get to witness it. There is corruption in each and every thing that we come across. For example, uh, corruption in employment. It is an amusing to witness the corruption in the employment of the people, which is mostly done through backdoor appointments. It would be a great benefit for the educated youth to get what they deserve and not things that, that is true corruption. And it is indeed such a great decision for the government to implement state selection board. So for your question, that would be my answer. I hope that satisfies your question. Okay, so uh, Ms. Abino, uh, is there any more questions from your end? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kilipo. And uh, the next question is actually general to all. Like, uh, since we're, we are speaking on employment, like, proper education is considered as a foundation for someone. So, uh, when it comes to white collar job, like many people said, uh, we would, uh, uh, there would be a lot of participants for that. But uh, given here in Nagaland, most of us, we really neglect the educational system, like for most, most of the government schools and et cetera here. Uh, like we prefer private, more of a public. So uh, if there could be anyone here who can uh, stress on like some points or yeah, any suggestions they would like to give, it would be very kind of you. Oh, sir, if I can answer that. <clears throat> yes, yes, sure. Uh, Carol, okay. see, uh, nowadays, uh, privatization, privatization of schools uh, has become a trend. And then uh, because of that, uh, I think uh, even the governments, they're, uh, they're like, uh, since they're, they're good private schools, and then since the enrollment is very less, uh, and since uh, I think uh, we can see that uh, enrollments in government schools are, you know, very less. So uh, since it is very less, uh, they also, uh, I don't think they, like, they give much importance to uh, development of uh, government educations. And I think uh, to tackle that, uh, go the government should stop neglecting uh, their college, uh, schools and uh, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> they, should, they, should, they should stop uh, ignoring them and then maybe uh, put more funds or uh, put more importance uh, to government institutions because uh, Nagaland, uh, even though there are many uh, schools and stuff like that and enrollments in good uh, private schools i think uh many many parents they struggle to send their uh, kids to private schools and uh, it, they don't send them uh, because they want to but uh, i think it's out of compulsion that uh, they do that because uh, ultimately government colleges they don't there are no uh, good education so yeah okay uh, so thank you italo so is there anyone that uh from the uh, panelists that would like to answer that questions. Uh, I've been those questions on education system. Okay, uh, so, sir, sir, sir Kevin, can I you like? Yes, sir, uh, you can. I about this question, since I've spoken on this topic, I would like to answer a bit about the educational system in Nagaland. As I've mentioned earlier, Nagaland educational system is mostly based on non-job oriented system. It's like we are preparing for a game which we are not going to play. So there is a need for revamping and reshaping of our educational uh, system. Like not everything is wrong. Like I said before, not everything is wrong, but it doesn't mean that <clears throat> it does not need a fixing. Uh, we usually, the teachers or the lecturers or the educational system focus more on students uh, giving them like outdated information to memorize, learn, and read, write only. So they don't focus much on skills and talents of the students. So uh, focusing more on that might help in solving this un unemployment problem. Thank you. OK, thank you, Kibiko. OK, so uh, 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 sir, am I now? Yes, sir, yes, sir, you are too audible now. Yeah, you can. Okay, I was using the headphone, so like, uh, okay. because of that, there was an issue with the audio. But anyway, um, thank you all presenters. You all did a very wonderful job. Um, for every one of you, we're talking on the role of the government uh, educational institution, as well as the attitude of the people. These, uh, these were some of the common points that were spoken by all the contestants. So uh, instead of just particularly asking to one individual, I would just like to throw this question to every one of you. Like, uh, you can uh, answer your views. You can give your views on this. Okay. Uh, this is thrown to the uh, participants. So, like, um, coming coming to the first point, that is uh, the role that is played by the educational system. You, uh, most of you were talking about educational system, educational system, but 
uh, obviously when we talk about educational system here uh, we find that skill based job oriented right uh, i guess you have heard of this uh, skill based courses instead of just going for regular classes like that uh, we have this skill based courses like carpentry like all these vocational courses which will in the long run uh, this will also uh, very much uh, create a sense of what is known as um, employment opportunities giving a hand uh, and so like uh, i would like to ask to the participants regarding uh, this thing what what because we find that like obviously skill based courses are there but uh, still then it, it has not been introduced in most of the institutions right so what do you feel or what is your take on that i i throw this question to all all the uh, participants anyone can answer like that Okay, so any participants can uh, answer that question. So I hope the questions was question was. Uh, clear to you guys i hope uh, sir can you please again repeat the uh, question because we are talking about unemployment and so one of the major ways to solve this unemployment issue is through what is known as skill based courses that are there that is available right and so uh, everyone of you have spoken on the educational system but i think uh, none none of the this thing um, none of the participants has uh, spoken particularly on the skill based courses that is available right so uh, what what is the take your take on that Okay, so uh, Sir is asking about the uh, uh, different vocational courses that are available and uh, wants to know what is your opinion on uh, specifically on that matter. Sure. Uh, I think it's uh, because of, uh, I mean, not a lot of people know about uh, these courses, I think. That is why uh, not many uh, of us go and uh, what, pursue that, I guess. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I think that's it, sir. I mean, if we could uh, maybe uh, teach people about these courses and how they can uh, help us in the long run, maybe then uh, more people will uh, go into that. Okay, so lack of proper awareness, Hitolo, you mean like that? Yes, yes, yes okay, lack okay. of proper awareness. Okay, okay. So uh, any uh, more from the other uh Yeah, sir, may I speak on this too? Sure, uh, sir. Actually, mm -hmm. not only uh, vocational courses, but if the school and colleges also, I mean, the regular uh, classes uh, which are going on, uh, if they focus not only uh, in this, um, only learning and memorizing, but if we were given a chance to, uh, what? Uh, I mean, if we were given a chance to practice that, uh, so that we can put it uh, into action, what we are learning in our colleges and in class. So, uh, likewise, if we are uh, given an, a chance to um, to exhibit our uh, what we are learning. Uh, I think uh, we can solve that. I mean, it's, uh, if it's not only uh, in vocational courses, but uh, because nowadays uh, we are only learning, and uh, the teachers, the lecturers, they give us ex uh, assignment, and we do that, and finally we go for this final exam. So, but uh, what we are learning, uh, most of the students, we tend to forget. But if we were, uh, I mean, if we were going for practical, then we won't. So, uh, uh, likewise, it will boost our 
uh, what we are learning in the institution. So, sir, I think uh, not only the vocational courses, but uh, if the school and the colleges, they focus on also you know, on the students uh, based on their uh, learning capabilities, I think uh, that will also help in uh, eliminating the, this unemployment. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Inhoto. You meant to say uh, practical applicability of what we are learning in school and stuff like that. So, uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. So, is there uh, anyone else from the audience? All right, so any more questions from the audience? Okay, so uh, ma'am, uh, and Bini, are you going to, okay, all right. Okay. Uh, sorry to pitch in in between uh, moderator. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, okay, so I hope I'm audible to all of you. Okay, at any point of time, you find that my voice is breaking in between, just uh, ping me. All right. Yeah, so um, let me first uh, get back to the speaker of today's session. I could see that all six of you were quite capable, efficient, well-versed, and uh, well learned about the ground reality of the unemployment issue in, in, in Nakhlin. Right, the issues that we, uh, you guys have uh, pinpoint, backed up, and also have elaborated are quite relevant. And uh, are, these are the uh, uh, matter of concern, right, at this point of time. Um, they are, I could see six of you have done extremely well, and uh, I think uh, there is no words beyond uh, uh, giving an individual one-to-one -one feedback on that. I could see there are also, uh, among six of you, they will be definitely an upcoming academician. Of course, an academic activist also I could see in some of your uh, 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 talk. Also, I could see some speakers are also um, quite assertive. And that's a good quality in academics, right? So I, I totally enjoy the entire session. I do not have a question as such that uh, good. Um, I don't think so. It is also a platform for me to just uh, uh, question or grill the student like I generally do in my classroom. But uh, here, uh, maybe I will give a few feedback um, or a, you can take it as a comment. Uh, we have been discussing about um, unemployment issue. Unemployment from the time memorial, if I can just uh, uh, pin there, uh, we have been talking about the problem of uh, unemployment. We keep on criticizing the government. We keep on criticizing the system. We keep on talking about the institutional arrangement where uh, this unemployment problem has not been uh, addressed, right? Um, keeping all this aside, I totally agree. These are the major issues which need to be addressed, looked into it, not only in Nagaland, but in the entire country. And also, it has a lot of things to do with the political party in the uh, power, right? So, uh, those are the different, those are the uh, general level of discussion, which I think Sir Kippen has also mentioned it. Um, coming to the nitty gritty and the uh, uh, very nature of the, uh, uh, or the reality of the problem that we could force see about unemployment going ahead. I will mention few of that. We are running out of time also. And I could also, uh, I was also informed that I think Ausun uh, Lamam has to leave for another meeting at around 3.30. So I think I will wrap up in another five, 10 minutes on this. Um, coming to the education, we keep on criticizing education, uh, the system of education, how education is effective in the, uh, giving that uh, employment platform to the people, to the student, right? Uh, this issue is, we, we are here not only criticizing the education system of Naglin, we are here criticizing the education system. Uh, edu education system is entirely a problem in the whole country, right? Coming to the uh, my concern in Naglin is I teach in um, 
Bangalore and Christ University of Bangalore. Prior to teaching here in Bangalore, I also taught at Data Institute of Social Sciences in Bombay. So uh, my experiences with the students over here uh, are different than the students that I see in my hometown back in Nagaland. I feel uh, quite worried about it. It's it's uh, uh, it's alarming uh, with the given pandemic that we are going through right now. When pandemic started, we talked about uh, unemployment, returns of migrants, migrants in Nagaland. If you see the city, the city is filled with uh, 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 the, the people from northeast in the, all this um, service sector, especially looking out for jobs. Those those are the typically an in an evidence of unemployment issue in the country, right? Uh, in the state, right? Um, coming to the curriculum, okay. Um, I do agree that our curriculum is not designed in such a manner that it get our student once they pass out or once they graduate, they get absorbed in the uh, uh, the job market, right? The skill factor, the issues of uh, 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 how a how a student is uh, is uh, equipped with the de with the demand or with the need of the companies or of the corporates or of the job market, right? So here, uh, those are the pertinent issues. But with the addition of the pandemic, while we all have more uh, moved the mode of the teaching from the offline to the online now, the teaching of uh, the education quality has been challenged, right? And this is not a very uh, a issue we, which we will be facing going ahead in the future, right? Many, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, research and there are a lot of debates and uh, concern that has been put up in the media talking about, especially by the academician, how our students are gonna be uh, received in the chalk market who are passed out in the year 2020, 21, and maybe 2022, right? And this, issues is because the quality of education is a concern because we have received education through online mode and uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the uh, uh, regional disparity in this uh, the right to education itself was is, is itself was challenged right there are many uh, students in the rural area they could not access to education because of the lack of infrastructure that's a different way uh, there's a different debate I, i'm going to back it at the moment my point over here is how you and I are going to equip ourselves and because pandemic this entire uh, uh, the paradigm shift that has happened in the education mode we how we are going to adopt with it how we are going to get fitted or get uh, equipped with ourselves so that we are equally capable uh, enough to get into the job market going ahead companies are not willing to recruit okay the uh, companies are not willing to recruit people they are kind of uncomfortable when they find a student who have passed out in the year 2020, 21, and 22, because they doubt the education quality of those students, which are in part through online mode. We can see this with our placement in our university uh, from this year onwards. And also we can see students who got, uh, uh, so, so generally our students uh, get go for higher studies in the foreign universities. Even they were also facing similar challenges because uh, the Indian education system has been a big, question mark when we talk about uh, the education system in the developed nations. But here what we are, uh, what my concern over here is, I think uh, the curriculum is of course something to revamp. STEM education, we should focus, right? And uh, also like uh, Kipenser has mentioned, the skill-based uh, education, more hands-on based education, more uh, 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 practical education should be implemented in our entire curriculum system. My students over here, they are not only coming and attending our classes, but they are also doing a lot of vocational activities, like doing a MOOC courses, to going, uh, enrolling it, uh, themselves in a course here. We don't mentor them, okay? But they themselves, they know how challenging it will be once they pass out. They wanted to get fitted themselves in the job market, right? Once, once they face the market, they should be capable enough to get fitted in that competition. Are we people doing that? Are, are we students in our... Uh, it, uh, so there are new numerous factors on that, okay? I'm not demeaning those factors. We are from a community, society, infrastructure, uh, income, household, right? Environment, the, the environment where the student is brought up, the exposure, right? It, 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 of course, it does matters a lot, but here are we even looking at in that direction, right? So in that, if we are not, then the unemployment problem that we are discussing right now, it is gonna be overwhelming going ahead, right? So uh, that is the unemployment issue that we face right now, it's gonna be more worse going ahead. That's what I mean to say. Coming to the, um, 
unemployment. Uh, this is now not in the very largest, uh, larger context coming to the uh, to uh, the unemployment typically um, in Nagaland. Okay, I heard many people talking about uh, the urbans in Nagaland has been flooded by the people coming from the rural areas. We're uh, uh, looking for government jobs. Government job has been kind of this uh, marked as its success. You are success in life if you fetch a government job for yourself. But it's the way around over here, right? People who are average students, they get into a government job. People who are quite, the IQ level is high, who are uh, intelligent, who are smart, the students get into the uh, 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 giant corporate companies or they crack the IS, or, uh, IS uh, civil service exams and all that, right? So, but in our clinic, it's the other way around. We desire only a government job. If you fetch a government job, you are successful in life. If you are self-employed, you, you have failed in your life. The education that you have imparted so far has gone in a ways, right? So that thinking, that mentality has to be changed. Now, coming to the uh, uh, migration, right? My topic on migration. I'm not talking here the migration people who have left Nagaland and the left the state and have started working in the uh, other uh, uh, cities. I'm talking about the uh, inter regional migration that is happening from uh, people coming from the uh, maybe from the Mon district to I'm not particularly picking a community over here, excuse me for that. Um, people coming from the Mon district to Kohima or people coming from Bokha to Kohima uh, or people coming from um, from all these uh, small, small rural areas and towns in the getting it, uh, flooding in the urban areas looking for a job, looking for a common job, white collar jobs with uh, the different level of education that them have imparted. Of course, the quality of education that they have imparted in the rural area in their villages are of course um, uh, uh, those are beyond uh, measurement right but what I'm trying to look, uh, look over here is that migration is happening we cannot stop migration we should not see that unemployment is highly visible in the rural in the urban area because of the uh, in ineligible we call that you you will use that word ineligible in, uh, are not capable uh, people who are flooding the urban areas from the rural areas. That's why the unemployment rate has gone so high because of these people moving out from the rural to the urban area. Here, we are in a democratic country, right? We, we have this democratic constitution. We cannot control uh, people moving for job avenues from rural to urban. And we also can't question that. Why? It's because uh, we all are first generation. I'm from a second generation, right? My father was not an, uh, a director of a company, right? My father was in common employed. But when we look into that, we should give opportunity to the first generation over here. Everyone is striving for its livelihood. So definitely they are going to move out from the rural to the urban area. That should not be a concern. That should not be a factor for the reason of rising unemployment in the rural, in the urban areas. We generally pick that up, okay? The, here, the government plays a very important role. Institutional arrangement plays a very important role, which I do agree, and I strongly agree. It's a big failure from the government in our state, right? So I'm not going to get into those political uh, uh, and uh, um, structural failure that we have faced so far and we are facing, and I don't know how we are going to fix this, but because it has a long, um, different lens of looking into it. What I'm trying to think over here is that um, the... Uh, the concern here is the report shared by the CMIE, the Center for the Monitoring Indian uh, Economy, the think tank, okay? They have recently published in the, I think in the month of July, August, where they found that the unemployment in India is rising higher in the rural as compared to the urban because rural agriculture sector is failed. Nagaland, agriculture sector is our backbone, right? If the agriculture sector is failing, then what is the, what, what is the implication over here, right? The backbone of our, the, of our economy in the state, if, if we don't, uh, before it's too late, if we don't revisit that again, we are going to be in the big trouble going ahead. There's no sustainability in our country. We do not have, like in the cities, we have all this IT sector booming. We have all this uh, uh, service sector booming. Government should look into that area. The government should look into those regions where um, uh, uh, those agriculture should be attractive so that the, the migration is not happening from the rural to urban. Migration should happen from the rural, uh, urban, people going back to rural area because of the higher income and the income in uh, attractive income in the agriculture sector for that government should um, it, it, 
like in the economics, we call that as um, uh, in the leucine model, right? It is, uh, the rural people are attracted in the rural because of the higher wage. It should be a reverse over here, right? And also there is another uh, context where I would like to talk about is also the wage-led growth, the concept of the wage-led growth. I think I'm bringing more conceptual idea over here. I'm sure uh, I'm not boring you guys. <laughs> okay. Wage-led growth. The, Everything is about income. We all are struggling for our livelihood, right? So be it in the rural, be it in the urban. Rural people are moving out in the urban area for its livelihood, right? It's a structure. They, everyone wants to progress in our life. Everyone wants higher income. So if suppose that higher income is being offered in the, in the agricultural sector, in the rural area, why not it will attract the urban people to move to the rural area and explore over there, right? Unemployment will get resolved at a certain level by itself. We don't need to retain those rural people. You guys are rural people. You live in the rural people. You don't come out of urban areas. We are not here to talk about it. And that something uh, very uh, uh, unconstitutional right we are not here to talk about it we are going to see uh, these people should should not they don't they are not the legitimate they don't have the legitimacy that we will be only in the rural area they don't have the liability that we will be only in the rural area and take care of the agriculture sector no rural urban people should also be in the position to move back to the rural area now for that government plays a very important role they should be like i said we are in a democratic country we cannot force people to move back to agriculture. There should be a pulling factor over there, right? The pull factor should be there, which means we can only persuade them, okay? By bringing certain projects, uh, the rubber board of India is doing a good job, okay? Uh, and we can only, uh, and the agriculture marketing is booming, okay? Organic agriculture, agriculture market. This should have been started way back. We are, we are late over here, but nonetheless, we are doing good, okay? So agriculture sector has to be, agriculture marketing should be focused and uh, there should be a, a, a successful project should be implemented in the crossroad level, not that projects borrowed from the central government. It has to be designed with the given nitty gritty of our communitized tribal society, okay? Coming to the last point, I'm gonna close over here. Education and uh, um, employment, right? How we are gonna fix this. Uh, have, you, have you guys popularly hear about industry and academic and industry collaboration? Over here, uh, many educational institutions, they look forward for that academic and industry collaboration. This collaboration is what we are lacking in our state, right? Academic and there will be more exposure, there will be more opportunities, the students are prepared themselves, how I should prepare myself, in what area I should equip myself so that once I pass out from the college, from the university, I should be in that competition, I should be in that race, right? So it is not that for the sake, our colleges have become um, a degree printing uh, institution, right? You just print the degree, done. Right, but you, whether you have really imparted that learning outcome from that student that he can apply in his real life for the livelihood, that we have not looked at. That's, that's a very um, concerning um, institutional level of um, revisit require, is required in that. Coming to the in, uh, collaboration between industry and academics. Uh, we now, uh, not our, our in, like someone has mentioned in the uh, con, uh, presentation that uh, I think uh, over a while, uh, that in the in the in the I think lately we are able to see that they are um, booming. Um, the, the entrepreneurship are being encouraged. Okay, we can see how the Amazon is doing, how uh, the courier service has increased. I think this this are just these are a very good indication to our youngsters. We have good uh, software engineers, right, We have uh, who have done uh, B.Tech in computer sciences, they are good in coding. We should also develop, uh, because we have these infrastructure challenges, right, to combat this uh, to com infrastructure challenges is not only within our limit, it's not within our control. It has a, uh, 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 it, it has an entire um, governmental administrative level of, uh, of, uh, uh, of intervention is required. What I'm trying to talk about over here is that we should encourage more of a SaaS company in India, a company which is based on an app, right? Take the example of, uh, uh, we have this food safari in India, in Nagaland, sorry, when I recently visited, it's a good service. We have this uh, courier service. Uh, you, it, it, it has a door, doorstep delivery. We should also encourage more of such SaaS company, which does not require a full-fledged office room to cooperate that, right? Some, uh, we should, uh, uh, something like transport, 
the transport section should be, uh, sector should be focused. Take the example of Ola, Uber, right? So all these things, uh, I think in India, the transport sector is what we have been neglecting. And if we trigger the transport sector, it's going to um, also uh, uh, lead to more tourism in our country, uh, in our state, right? More tourism, hotels, hospitality, and also this, uh, all this sector will be accelerated, right? So that means more job for us. And um, uh, apart from that, uh, men, men, change of mentality, a change of uh, perception about unemployment and the causes of unemployment. I think these are some of the booming uh, areas which I think uh, not only the government should, of, of course, government should give us the platform, but not only the government, but I also the young minds like us should also look forward to bring more job opportunity, not only for ourselves, but we should be also able to employ someone in those uh, 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 in, in those um, uh, businesses, right? On those ventures, economic ventures. So it, it has a very, um, uh, it, it, of course, it leads a very long debate on that, um, bringing on the, what we should be doing, what government should be doing. I think what government should be doing is also, I think, I don't remember, one of you rightly pointed out about uh, the politicians uh, during the time of election. Unemployment is, to some extent, government likes unemployment. Okay, so we are we keep on saying that unemployment, unemployment is an evil due to society. Government is not looking into it. Government also sometimes they they want to have certain level or percentage of unemployment in the economy. We call that in the economic terms as a myth of unemployment, where when we have certain level of unemployment in the in, in, in the cities, big cities like in Bombay, in Bangalore, in Delhi, uh, or in the developed nations, we will, this meet of unemployment is something uh, which kind of benefit the corporate giants, but in Nagaland is different. Unemployment is there, people are willing to give vote to in, during a time of election because I want my son to get job, even though he is a 10 dropout. So if there is a higher level of unemployment, our bargaining power is less, right? We keep on telling that you, there should be a fair election, there should be uh, a clean election, but how do you achieve that clean election and fair election when you're, or you have five siblings at home and five of them are unemployed, right? The parents are forced to get into that um, mode of election and the politicians have more bargaining power over here the corporates have uh, uh, have more bargaining power when there is a certain percentage of unemployment in our back home in Nagaland when we have higher unemployment the politicians have more bargaining power so we tend to vote for those people who promise us a um, um, job right so certain level of unemployment is good for them if the unemployment is zero in the in the state which means we won't fall in the trap or we won't fall in the trap or in the campaigns of those politicians right so this is uh, this is a in fact a very sensitive and a large uh, point of discussion which is not only in the domain of economics it's spilled over to the social uh, institutional and political uh, area i am not patching over there but this is something for us to think about also right so i think i will close uh, from here and i let me stop and if uh, any of the uh, judges in the room can um, would like to take time then i I think I can, okay, we can do that. I'm going to stop here. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we have, okay, I think Kipin so has something to say, so I'll keep myself muted. Um, uh, the moderator, uh, can you just guide us when do we declare the result? Oh, okay. So uh, if you, if the respected judges are uh, done with their time, then uh, we can move on. Keep over, over to to say. Yeah, keep in Okay, okay. Okay, Sir Kepin, uh, you may kindly take the time. Um, thank you, Ms. Renbeni. Uh, thank you very much. You have uh, given all the necessary inputs of what should have been given in the first place. Um, anyway, I would like once again want to, before we just come with the concluding remarks, right? I just, I just wanted to bring uh, some of my views here too. Okay. Um, so, uh, basically, when we say un un unemployment, um, if we say what is unemployment, it, uh, it is uh, like, it is a term that is used to refer to an individual who are jobless. They, but employable. They are employable, but they are still jobless. Right. And so, Basically, uh, when we look into this, uh, into the issue in Nagaland, as uh, has been stated by the various speakers also regarding um, Niti Ayo, uh, stating that uh, Nagaland is one of the most, uh, this thing, um, 
one of the most unemployed uh, and one of the most uh, also looking back corrupted uh, states in India. And so basically, if we look back, we will find that like um, one thing that is to be blamed here is regarding the attitude of the people as, uh, as many of you have suggested. Because like when we say attitude of the people, basically as every, every of the uh, uh, speakers has also brought this issue regarding when we say white color job, all every one of us always think about white color job. But basically it's not just the white color job that, that will give employment because obviously uh, even when we look into the index, we, when we look into the case of Nagaland, we have excess employment excess employment by um, in uh, even in the government sector also and so basically when we look uh, we will find that like um, the attitude of the people be it either working in a private sector or in a government sector basically if you look back uh, you will see that like uh, during the recent pandemic there were so many of the Nagas which returned those who were working outside Nagaland and if we look into the job market here, I would say that rather I would say that uh, um, if we look back, even the shops, business institutions that are run, these are run by the non-locals at the first place. So if why if them, then why not us? Why not we the Nagas? We also, I think it is a high time. We need to uh, retrospect. We need to look back. And also it's not just about that. Uh, we must also respect our job, however small the job may be. We have to, and these things has to be installed at the first place. We have to respect our job, however small it is. So um, basically when we say, obviously the attitude of the people also has a very uh, important role to play. And uh, as stated earlier also, uh, like the skill belt based courses, many, uh, the government also has to very much um, open up for these uh, skill-based courses in, in the colleges and universities, like in the form of carpentry, in the form of like electricians, plumby, plumber, uh, be it even uh, cooking classes and all this baking and all this. And uh, not only that, even uh, if we look back, again, coming back even into the uh, government also, uh, the government also, Basically, if we look back, uh, as stated by Hitolo, very much the land ownership is uh, one of the main problems because uh, when, when we say land ownership with the Nagas, we, we are not, in a, uh, not giving away the, this thing, our land ownership to the, to the non-locals outside of Nagaland. And so, uh, but now the government has decided with what is known as lease system, wherein like you will find it for 100 years, for 150 years, the lease system is given like that. And so... Um, even uh, the uh, other MNCs, multinational corporations, companies. Now we see so many, uh, sh so many shops, so many distinct malls coming up. Even in Dimapur, in Koima, basically, if we look back, and so this will also open up. If there is uh, opening up of all these, then obviously employment opportunities will also very much flow in. And so, yeah. Um, these are some of the points which I feel that uh, we should uh, we should very much take this into consideration. And uh, so basically, I'm running. Uh, we are running out of time, so let me cut short, and then I'll. Uh, I had many things to say, but still, and obviously, time is running out. So basically, I'll cut short, and then I'll stop from here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you, Sir Kipen and uh, Membrin Penny. Uh, so if you uh, the judges are done with your uh, evaluation then uh, now I give the the time to the judges to for these uh, result declarations so you may uh, kindly take the time okay yeah uh, okay I think uh, the judges has um, 
all three of us has given our verdict on this. Um, yeah, before I declare uh, the, we also have a space speaker from both the colleges. That's what I was informed. Okay, so um, we ha we have uh, uh, the first and the second prize on this. Before I declare the result, um, six of you done an excellent job. In, in this kind of debate, there is no first and the second, okay? Or there is no someone who have, uh, um, uh, um, who, who got first is, is considered to be well, uh, academically well equipped or well learned. We all, we all have done excellent job, but in any race, there is someone who has to be first and there is someone who has to be second also. So we, just for the um, formality, we are gonna declare uh, the first and the second over here. Um, the first, uh, let me first, uh, declare the one who got the first and the second. So the first is, um, first position is uh, Hitolo and from, I think, ECC, Hitolo uh, Lauren, okay, from, no, it's from Tetsu College, I'm sorry. I think Hitolo Lauren is from Tetsu College. Um, well spoken, uh, my boy, and uh, I can see in you as a good academic activist also going ahead, well articulated, intellectually sound, and uh, I think that is uh, uh, one of the quite assertive uh, speech that I have heard. Okay. Second one is um, Kilipo, okay, Kilipo from ECC. Kilipo from ECC, I think I'm correct. Okay, Kilipo from ECC, <coughs> well constructed speech, and uh, uh, there is a lot of, uh, um, I think, ground reality that you have picked on to, to present your, uh, the, con to contest your unemployment issues, right? So I think uh, to a larger extent, uh, uh, these two speaker, uh, the both the judges have decided that uh, the kilo, uh, Lauren, Mr. Lauren from Tetsu College, the first position and the second position is Kilipo from the ECC. Coming to the best speaker, the best speaker I think also remains the same. So for from the Tetsu College, it is um, Lot um, Hitolo, and from the uh, from the ECC, it is. Okay, congratulations to both of you and uh, the congratulations to all the six speakers over here. Thank you. Okay, so uh, congratulations for, for uh, the winners, uh, Mr. Kitolo uh, Itolo and then uh, Ms. Kilipo. And thank you for the judges as well. And uh, now we have come to the end of our uh, event today. So uh, we just have one uh, item left for that is the uh, vote of thanks by ma'am uh, Demsitula from HOD, Department of Economics. So uh, you may kindly take that time. Uh, thank you so much, moderator, for this time. Mm. Firstly, I, on behalf of the Department of Economics of Eastern Christian College and Tetsa College, would like to offer our sincere appreciation and gratitude to all the three judges. Thank you for sparing your time and sharing your valuable feedback, which I believe has been beneficial for all of us. Also, all the students, the participants, Hitolo, Vinivi, Shakoi, Kipibo, Kilibo, and Ichi, all six of you, you did really well. Thank you for sharing your opinions and your ideas. We really respect your opinions and your ideas, and we look forward to more participation from you. Finally, from a very personal basis, on a very personal basis, I would like to thank the Department of Economics of Texo College, all your colleagues. Uh, I would like to especially mention her, Mem Lili Chishi. Um, she, as a teacher, her objective has always been to develop students, regardless of whichever college they belong to. So. Uh, it was a very interesting experience collaborating with you, and I really look forward to collaborating with your department in the coming events as well. So thank you so much, moderator. Back to you. Okay, uh, so thank you, ma'am uh, Tamsitula, um, for your speech. So now that uh, we've come to the end of our uh, session for the day, so um, just want to wrap up this session by just uh, simply saying thank you, uh, first of all, to all the uh, participants. Uh, you've all done a very lovely job, and um, and especially to those uh, winners also. I, I want to congratulate once again, and uh, also the respected judges for your time um, and, and for all your inputs as well. And uh, lastly, I want to thank the uh, my colleagues and, uh, of course, the audience uh, for the support 
you who attended today's session. So um, with this, we will just uh, end our session. Okay. So um, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll hope that we'll, we'll just hope that we'll get to see in the future as well.